Hello everyone and welcome back to Stock Career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8 and in this episode we are going to aim to land on Ike and then maybe send another satellite to EVE because we only did one of the satellite contracts last time. Mainly explore Ike, plan to flag on Ike, science data from the surface of Ike is the big thing. Um, and there's this, this Duna ejecta back with you and new orbital station around Duna, but I don't like the 6,000 units of liquid fuel that we need to put on. Three pilots have to be on there and it has to support 16 Kerbals. I mean, I can pick up the contract, but I don't think it's going to be one that we're going to do like immediately. Um, we do have room in the active contracts uh, pool, if you will. So, all right, uh, we can just pick that up for later. And the Duna Ejecta, at some point we'll bring back some Duna Ejecta, I'm sure. We put a station in orbit around Kerbin, didn't we? I don't know if we renamed it or not. Uh, station 1, orbiting Kerbin. So, I guess they want another one? Hold on, that's a little bit loud. Okay, well, maybe we'll uh, add a module to the station? I don't know. Hmm. But I think we should wait until we get the big solar panels. We do have some science now after that EVE mission. Uh, high power electrics with the big solar panels will cost 300. The cheetah is nice. I like the cheetah. Cheetah's like a poodle, but better. And I like the skiff. I'll be honest, this is this is where I'm at. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so we have unlocked that technology, and we want to send a mission over to. Let's just time warp to the Ike win, uh, to the Duna window first. So what we need is just to land somebody on Ike. Very simple. Let's get the craft that landed somebody on Duna and work from there. We're not gonna need these two parachutes. That's for Duna. You could probably carry some more science. We've got only one part left. You know what? Goo containers, not the science junior. Okay, well, we got... That's a swivel, but we've got better engines now. The cheetah does not have the same thrust. But at least it's the right form factor. 0.66 thrust to weight ratio. After this stage, that should be fine. If we really wanted uh, much more thrust, we could go with the skiff. Where is the skiff? There's the skiff. Skiff is still better as a vacuum engine than the swivel. It's only a little bit heavier, but better ISP and, and better thrust. R O N R. Well, uh, if you have any questions, tell me. The skiff. I think we could replace the skipper here. Other things. The skipper costs 5,300. I mean, two skiffs don't have the same thrust though. Uh, we, had, we actually had uh, skipper and two of these. So that's 1,600. It's about 7,000 altogether. So three of these would be about the same cost and would weigh the same but be more efficient in vacuum not on that sea level uh, the bobcat is the other option and we could just use two of them and they're more efficient at sea level not as good as the skiff in vacuum or the skipper in vacuum but Mass-wise, less than the skiff option. And surface attachable, of course. Well, I mean, we could try the engine cluster recovery thing, but 
Uh, on the other hand, we don't have stage recovery and this one isn't going to orbit this time. Remember, that only works if we go all the way to orbit and come back with the engine cluster. Without stage recovery, it's not going to automatically recover that. Mm, sea level ISP is a little bit weak with these, just these. Gives us one extra part so we can slap our barometer on. If we use this skiff, we would need three of them. I think we can get off the ground with the 1.15, so... It'll be very gentle. And... A little out of Valgo this time, I suppose. Jeb went last time to Duna. Oh, there's the moon. <laughs> We're not going there, though. Mop balance. A hundred ablator worked last time, I think, so... Go. Actually going up a bit faster than I thought it would. I think we were a little bit shallow. Oops. I wonder if there's a setting to just have the orbit view be the default one. But it's just up automatically instead of me having to go to it. Cheetah time! Oh, we can get the solar panels out already. Okay, that's good enough. 96 by 80. And wow, we could just continue burning right now, actually. It has gone straight out. That's too much. Oh, maybe we should just go around. Okay, let's use the this maneuver thing. Oh, but I want to change the timing of the thing, and it's really not good for that. Oh, we don't have any... Inclination. Yeah, okay, like that then. Go. Oh. <laughs> Probably late. We'll have to correct it out there. Oh, oh, what? Oh. Nope. Okay. Didn't read my throttle as quickly as I would have liked. Probably because I clicked outside the window. Uh, moon! Gosh darn you. Okay, well, because of the moon, we're gonna have to go a little bit past Duna and then come back in. Hello, Mr. Doobie. Well, uh, aside from Barafel, nobody's been in class so far, so... Tardiness is preferable to absenteeism. We are trying to land on Ike. And it's Val doing it this time. Last time we had sent Jeb to Duna. We've got three cro uh, contracts for Ike. This is where things get complicated. <laughs> uh, we gotta land anyway. I don't care what orbit we're at with respect to Duna. Okay, that's crashing. That'll be fine. So just a 13.5 meter per second correction. Once we get out. So departing Kerbin. Finish the ISSL build. No, not as such. No. I'm, uh... I was working on actually... Because NASA has their own ISS model. And I was thinking of actually getting that into Kerbal, but it's got a lot of work. It's a very complicated model with lots of polygons that wouldn't be good for a game, you know. So... Maybe if I get that done at some point, I would try. Well, okay, I'll take that for now. Well, yeah, we'll just take that for now and we'll fix it when we get there. Did Jeb EVA in high... let me see. Yeah. 
I'm sure Jeb did the crew report as well. Barometer though, maybe not the barometer. Aha! I mean, there was that transfer where Ike actually captured us, but is that on the opposite side of Duna or? Hmm. If we do it like this, how much will it take to just capture around Ike right now? Or should we get Duna's help for all this? Oh, well, I guess we should just get Duna's help. Let's the MADB, yeah. But the the big uh, Mars base camp thing could be used as a, as a moon base if you wanted to. The nice thing about it is it's designed to go to Mars as well. There's really no point hanging around the moon because uh, the moon likes to suck you down. <laughs> it's not the best place to just sort of stay, really. That's why you normally want to hang out at a Lagrange point or something. But, I mean, they'll be in a high lunar orbit, so that's not really helpful for lunar operations. Basically, the Delta V to get to the station is gonna be like as much as it does, needs to get back to Earth, so I mean it's like... The point is that to get from Lunar Orbit to Lagrange Point or to get from Lunar Orbit to Earth... With crew it's gonna be about the same. With cargo you can get from one to the other very slowly because they can do all sorts of funny maneuvers and take months to get there, but... Um, with car with uh, crew, you, the Delta V wise, it's not gonna be that different. I mean, 800 meters per second is sort of small, right? And personally, there's a general uh, principle for everyone. Uh, NASA, SpaceX, Blue Origin. I would really like to see them get somebody into low Earth orbit before talking about landing on the moon. Uh, the point of Artemis is to land a person on the moon, as far as I know. Um, because they want... I mean, it, all, all they said was, by 2020, they wanted to land a person on the moon. They didn't say they wanted to build moon infrastructure. They wanted political points, as far as I can tell. And they've, they've on some occasions, said that they're just gonna pass on the... I mean, first of all, the gateway was supposed to be uh, a precursor. Now it's like a, you know, later thing that they've pushed off. Which pisses off our international partners, because they were sp the international partners were supposed to be involved, like Canada was supposed to be involved in the Gateway project. But now that's been put off, and Canada doesn't know whether it should spend money on it or not. But there's no real effort to create any anything sustainable with the moon. I mean, on the part of NASA. I mean, Blue Origin might want to, but Blue Origin hasn't gotten a person into orbit yet, or anything into orbit, for that matter, so... Okay, approach to Ike. Let's get the high orbit. Well, we want one mystery goo for the surface. Let's see. 30 science. I think low would be better. Too bad Val isn't a scientist and all, but... Temperature scan we've done before. Pressure scan, we have not. Crew report, we have. That means EV report, we have. Or, yeah. The elder George Bush wanted to go to Mars. But then he commissioned a report about how much it was going to cost and he gave them a horribly large number. And so he shied away from it. It was like a, more than a hundred billion dollars. And then it was really in, largely in response to that report that Robert Zubrin created the case for Mars. He was arguing against the conclusions of that report and saying that he could do it for less, basically. Oh, we might have better textures on Ike too. Ike is looking spiffy. Or maybe that's just a terrain scatter. So yeah, I mean, last time I checked, NASA's all got confused. <laughs> I mean, 
I don't know if NASA's even entirely sure what the heck it's doing right now, but... Except they're definitely building SLS. I think they can be totally sure about that. Crew Dragon launch aboard, it's about time. <laughs> I'm more concerned about Dragon than I am about Starship. I would like people... Uh, I would like us to be able to get to low Earth orbit again. Thank you. The United States, I mean. And it'll probably be cheaper than getting rides on Soyuz. So, uh, where should we land? I mean, this this gray spot looks decent. It could just land anywhere here, right? Let's see, we got the Orbit Ike. Transmit, or let's transmit something or another. Tra temperature scan is fine. We'll do another one to recover. Oh, we don't have comm devices. Well, we'll just recover. Keep, keep, keep. Still got all five, right? Yep. Well, uh, that trajectory should mean that this gets done just before we land. I'm gonna retract the solar panels now. Oh yeah, no, I've done that before, and then they changed the numbers on me, right? <laughs> I made a starship. I made the front, the nose end, just to make it look right. And... Then they changed everything, so I said, screw it. <laughs> Floppy wing design. Yeah, that's irritating. Uh, you'll notice, I mean, I've been practicing with wings in a way, with the... the airplanes and the... what you call it, Kasei rocket. So... Just in case I need to make some special wings here and there, but I haven't had much success with that. Probably those will just end up being procedural wings. Flying Starship is one thing, doing the fancy stuff they're doing while keeping it balanced is another. It's more a matter of figuring out where the center of mass and center of lift need to be than anything about actually manually flying it. Well, well, well don't drift. Okay. Let's get the goo. Keep. Report. Keep. Several craft files around? No, I wouldn't try anything that didn't have the right numbers. Anyway, they're not they're not realism quality, are they? Ow. Uh boink. I really need to put ladders on this thing once I get more parts to use. Flag's always backwards. Foul on Ike. I didn't check which biome it was, actually. Um, hmm. Don't know what to say, actually. Looks like the moon. Really? It's an astute observation. Other Ike rocks. I mean, they probably won't spawn any. Those are probably just random things. Wow, 36 meters per second. Are you an Ike Rock? I think you're just a scatter. Yep. Just terrain scatter. Okay, whatever. Let's just go back. They didn't give us a contract to get an Ike Stone or anything. Okay. Well, we've done things. We can we can go. I mean, it's gonna be a while before we um, get the transfer window back. I guess we'll leave her on the surface until then. Let's go to the tracking station.
We did pick up that orbital station around Duna contract, but that's big. It needs 6,000 liquid fuel and everything. And 16 Kerbal facilities and 3 actual pilots on board. That'll be a long-term thing. Maybe that's about 75 degrees? That's not a lot of debris. That's, that's nothing. We've already cleared up a lot of debris. This is minor debris. And go. I mean, we could land in a different bio. Maybe we should. If we knew which one was a different biome. I mean, definitely if this is... This is grayish, then the light grayish ones will be a different biome, right? Ike is looking pretty serious these days. Yeah, let's just let's just take that trajectory and see. This is Ike, yeah, this is Ike. Do you like Ike? I like Ike. <laughs> What's weird? This is the most normal lander you could ever create on- In fact, if you're not making your lander exactly like this, you're doing it wrong. Little spark engine. It's really all you need. Got your heat shield, got everything. Now, is this still Midlands? I don't know. We can just A and find out. So basically, um, it's not trial and error. It's Lowlands now. Uh, it's a matter of encouraging you to EVA. No, you can do trial and error EVA from any orbit. It's just that you won't pass over the whole thing. You won't pass over all the surface, but you can still see where some biomes are and know what biome you're over. Now, if they ask you to hit a particular biome, you might be in a little bit of a pickle. But there aren't that many biomes. There are only like eight on each one or something like that, so... I like what they, they've done with the place in general. The Three Kingdoms, like... Which Three Kingdoms? Like, Total War Three Kingdoms? Oh, that's good. I should get back into that again. I'll give you guys a choice of games after this, because I think Dylarood said that he wasn't feeling too good. We'll see what, how he's feeling when I come close to the end of my normal Kerbal stream. And then I'll give you guys a choice and I'll uh, make that an option. Uh, mainly, uh, probably, the, I mean, yesterday we were doing Outer Worlds and I was playing a Psychopath, so that's probably option number one. Go War Three Kingdoms, I guess we'll call option number two. And then uh, we can throw in Fortnite for the heck of it, because I'm I'm into Fortnite now. You guys are in tr so much trouble. <laughs> but uh, uh, so that's option number three. It was very entertaining. I, I, I it's it, it's a very very close borderline between entertaining and disturbing. So a bit worried. <laughs> uh, uh, on, you know, I had tried the game out to see whether it worked, and I actually ran through the very beginning of it. Uh, and I played a pacifist character that didn't want to kill anybody. And that, that actually worked too. Um, didn't get as far as I did with the psycho character, but not very lucrative, the pacifist character. Um, definitely did not have much money. Dauntless? I don't have Dauntless. Well, at the lowlands. I don't even know what the other biomes were, biome was. Um, hope. Up. Have enough fuel to get home. So do I. Let's find out. 2,000 meters per second. Should be. Free on Epic? Yeah, but I have to download it. There's a lot of things that are free on Epic. <laughs> Uh, I've got I've got Fortnite now. They've got me on that, so they can't get me on something else. I only have room for one of these things. 
weird building battles. Well, it's amusing. It's amusing. It's sure different. Now... Oops. There's a question of whether I should break orbit directly from Ike, you know, just escape out, or whether I should do so from Duna orbit. We need to go around this way. Hmm. I feel like we could just sort of eject out, couldn't we? Look at the scenery. Oh, I wanted to do that in uh, Elder Scrolls Online. I still got that installed, which I really need to play and uninstall. <laughs> I just wanted to look at the scenery, yeah. I wanted to be the worst... Uh, uh, my my shtick was uh, being the worst archaeologist ever. Sort of the Indiana Jones of, uh, of Elder Scrolls Online. There are a lot of games I want to do that, like Watch Dogs. I don't want to play the game, I just want to... Oh, and then there's that free one that they gave uh, with Notre Dame in it. The Assassin's Creed Unity, I think it was. Witcher is beautiful, yeah. But I downloaded that just to look around since they gave it for free. I didn't want to play that version of Assassin's Creed, which I understand is quite buggy, actually. Movie? No. <laughs> No, no, that's... That, I, I didn't like the movie at all. <laughs> I don't think anybody liked the movie. I, I, I don't know. Maybe there's some strange Assassin's Creed movie people out there who liked the movie, but I sure didn't. Well, there are different games, and the different games are actually quite different, too. Um, especially the more recent ones. Uh, the one in Egypt and the one in Greece. I've got the one in Greece, ancient Greece, and that's pretty good. I like how they did, did that. I don't know if the Assassin's Creed purists like the one, the Assassin's Creed Odyssey. But uh, I do. Never played any game except KSP. Well, grab some of those free-to-play games and live a little, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Y yeah, a lot of games have the same controls, but you sort of have to get used to them the first time. I have that problem when I'm uh, trying to get, uh, like, people who didn't grow up playing games, you know, get them to experience a particular one. Because obviously WASD and all this stuff is uh, second, you know, second nature to a lot of us. The noobness is fine. Well, that's a good periapsis right there. It's a lot better than the insufferable snobbishness of other gamers sometimes. I wanted that, yeah. Mario? Um, first game I played was probably Centipede. Very but yes, you, you made that joke before, or somebody did. But, um, Pac-Man, you know, and then, uh, probably the Jet Fighter and, you know, airplane games soon after that, and then Wing Commander, well, Wing Commander 2 before Wing Commander 1, actually. You, you actually played Pong. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't actually play Pong. I have made a variant of Pong in Unity, thank you very much, but uh, yeah, it's amazing how, uh, I mean, basically, I played a lot of very, very impressive games at really, really low frame rates, because they were really the kind of games that taxed systems in those days, you know, like Wing Commander was sort of really intense. And then um, Final Fantasy VII was another one when that came out, and that sort of thing. It was rough. <laughs> I never played uh, console games, so didn't have a console. 
You like Rack Wreck It Ralph? That's a game movie? I didn't even know it was a game movie. Ace Combat 2? I never played any of the Ace Combats, but I've got Ace Combat 7. And I played through the first few missions of that. I like it. I don't mind the arcadey side of things, but... And the planes look beautiful. Well, that's a good periapsis. Now we just have to worry about mountains. I mean, technically we can capture ahead of time. But timing things so that we don't hit mountains is a special task. There are still people alive who had all sorts of interesting first experiences. Um. Oh, I need to rustle it up again. We don't really need to retract this little panel since we're dumping that. Okay. Should be fairly gentle coming in now. I feel like I remember Lo Moon Landings too, darn it. <laughs> I've watched enough of that stuff now. Live is overrated. I'm an historian. Most of the time, people at the time have no idea what's going on. And close, and you get like big bucks. I don't do admin building stuff, yeah. Tape of moon landing? Well, I don't know what tape you're talking about. NASA's not allowed to sell public goods, so it would be a copy, not any original. Bus tour driver at Cape Canaveral, jeez. That's nice. I've been on those tours. I've only been there once. Multiple bus tours on that one trip. No, they have the actual original tape reels for everything. That NASA wasn't like prone to recording video, uh, unfortunately. I mean, you have to remember, this is back in the day before people had VCRs. Recording live transmissions via TV is, uh, was not a thing at the time, right? People didn't have VCRs at home or anything like that. So, the whole idea of recording a live transmission didn't seem to occur to them well enough. <laughs> they got all the audio. They they recorded reels and reels of audio and those are all stored. But the video is a separate thing. They didn't really do a good job of that. Initially. Eventually I think they got the idea. Thousand Science. New surface out outpost on the moon. It seems reasonable. Alright, surface outpost on the moon. <laughs> 